Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, let me tell you straight off the top. This is a red pill video. So, warning, warning. Um, if you don't want to go down the conspiracy rabbit hole and take the red pill, I beg of you, do not watch this video. Um, because you may regret uh, what you see. Um, but this is stuff that has to be covered. It's stuff that's breaking, and it's stuff that I can't deny. So I'll give another warning before we get into it, and then we'll get into it. But I'm gonna start out with this silver chart. This is the monthly. Now, we've had a pretty strong rally in silver over the last couple days. You can see we're at about 1750. Now, uh, the other thing you can see here is that I've drawn arrows to the false breakout that we had, and you can see that corresponds with that blue line right there, and it, it failed. Um, but now we have another breakout occurring, and this one is, is a crossover breakout. You can see the red line has crossed over. Now, even more important than crossing over on those lines is a mutual rising scenario. Uh, what that means is that both of those lines are rising, as opposed to one crossing over, uh, the one going down, and the one going up. But when both of the lines are rising, uh, that's when you get a serious situation. Um, as we can see right here, you can see that's a serious situation. That's when silver just simply explodes. Now we're coming from a, such an oversold position here. Who knows? Just to give you an example of how far this can run, there was an article on Zero Hedge today about a guy speaking before the CFR talking about how, yeah, I own, you know, gold. Anybody who doesn't own gold doesn't know anything about history. He had, he, he had to kind of backtrack a little bit because it was, you know, controversial. But basically what he was saying is that, um, you know, you need to own a certain percentage of gold and silver. Now that traditionally has always been 10%. Now, I made a comment in the Zero Hedge article correcting them because they said, well, gold, you know, 10%. No, not gold 10%. Actually, precious metals 10%. That's a traditional recommendation. And, of course, uh, people who are skeptical about the, the system that we have probably will want to be higher than 10%, much higher. I'm not going to tell you where I am, but it's just about everything. Uh, but anyway, so if you look at that 10% of assets, um, the figure that we get from Zero Hedge is about $223 trillion in assets. That's a 2012 number. Um, if you divide that by 10, you get about $22 trillion. And then you need to cut that in half because that's going to be half gold and half silver. That's going to be my uh, idea of what that should be. Now, that gives us roughly um, $11 trillion in gold and $11 trillion in silver. How many ounces is $11 trillion of silver in current prices? Well, let me tell you this. It's a thousand years of mining supply. So now if you take that and, di and divide that by 10, or, or the other way you could look at it would be multiply the price of silver by 10, then you're talking about 100 years of mining supply. Well, that's obviously not acceptable. So how about 100? Well, that's 10 years of mining supply. So that's telling you that if we're talking just about physical silver, that the price of silver could go 100 fold and for people to have 5% of assets into silver, uh, we still have to use up 10 years of mining supply. To get down to one year, it has to go a thousand fold. It has to go to $17,500 an ounce. That's the kind of crazy numbers we're looking at here and that's just based on the traditional portfolio values of 10 percent for precious metals um you do the math maybe my math is wrong but i don't think so so this chart could be very explosive going forward we've made the cross now let me show you so you believe me here let me take off the arrow and let me zoom in here and i will show you that this, these are both rising now. Let's get over to the monthly. See that? You see the blue uptick? Tick, tick, tick up. Blue is ticking up, red is ticking up. We have both lines rising. Is this a bottom or a rally from the bottom? 
It very well could be. So let's get into the flat earth stuff here. This is really big stuff. Uh, I can't give you a big enough warning if you don't want your mind blown straight out of the water. Um, just tune out right now. Um, but let me start out by showing you um, this is my channel called nasamoonhoax.com. Now this is how I started to get into this stuff. Um, I knew from a very early age that NASA wasn't telling the truth. Now recently I have investigated, I've spent countless hours investigating the lies coming out of NASA. And you can see the quote from the page, it's easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. And let me tell you, that is the truth. When people believe something, uh, you just can't convince them. So let me show you, this is, this is uh, just a video I'm gonna play a little bit here. This is from NASA's Orion Project. Orion is getting ready to launch. My name is Kelly Smith, and I work on navigation and guidance for Orion. Orion is NASA's next generation spacecraft. Built with versatility in mind, it can take astronauts deeper into space than we've ever gone before, to an asteroid, or even onto Mars. For these missions, Orion has to be one tough spacecraft, withstanding high speeds, searing temperatures, and extreme radiation. Before we can send astronauts into space on Orion, we have to test all of its systems. And there's only one way to know if we got it right. Fly it in space. For Orion's first flight, no astronauts will be aboard. So uh, I'm not gonna waste a lot more time on this guy. You can go to nasamoonhawks.com and, and see the video, but I mean, <laughs> come on. This guy's an actor. So um, this was my introduction into this topic. It was fairly clear to me the more I delved into it, you can see the bookmarks. Uh, there are some great guys, Bart Sabrell, he does Astronauts Gone Wild. There's September Clues Forum, James Collier, fantastic. Wagging the Moon Doggy, Dave McGowan, complete exposure of NASA. Moon Faker, there's a NASA Scam, a fantastic site. You can't find stuff anywhere in the world that's on NASA Scam, and I've mirrored that site in case it goes down. So there's a lot of videos. There's four pages of videos uh, showing the lies that NASA tells. Uh, they're unbelievable. And so that was my kind of foray into this stuff. Now, what's happening now is really kind of shocking because what's happening now is that the one of the big segues into this was that a lot of us were analyzing NASA's Earth from Space pictures. Now, supposedly there's these thousands of satellites out there in space orbiting the Earth, and we don't have any pictures of the Earth from them. In, in fact, the pictures, we just have very few pictures of Earth from space at all. Uh, uh, the ones they use, the big blue marble series, actually come from Apollo uh, 40 years ago. Why is that? Why don't we have all these pictures of Earth from space? Well, the answer is more disturbing than anything you can even imagine. I mean, this literally is the red pill you don't want to swallow. And I'm going to tell you um, where I am percentage-wise. Now, as far as uh, that NASA faked the moon landings, I'm 100% certain. Uh, well, no, let, let me take that back. That the King James Bible is the Word of God, I am 100% certain. That NASA faked the moon landings, I'm 99.99% certain. Now, that's not that big of a deal, but when you start to dig further, it becomes a big deal. And that's when we get into, hold your hat here, folks, the flat earth theories. Now, these are theories, I'll tell you right off the bat, I'm about 70% convinced and about 30% not convinced. And I'll show you the reasons why. Uh, but this is big and it's breaking right now. Now let me show you some, some images here because these are important. Um, this is the Flat Earth map. Now if you remember on the member site, uh, when I first came across this idea and we were debating this, 
the first thing that came to me and it also came to Eric DeBay and Mark Sargent and Matt and all the rest of these guys that are doing this is, okay, well, let's just go do some flight times. Because if you look at this flat earth map, it's quite obvious to anybody looking at this that a flight from Australia to South America or a flight from Southern Africa to Australia or a flight from Southern Africa to uh, South America, Southern tip of South America, these are going to be very, very long flights compared to, you see the map here, uh, LA to Japan. I actually pulled these flight times, uh, direct flights, okay? And I found some 12 hour direct flights. So at that point, when I found 12 hour direct flights from Johannesburg to Sydney, from Sydney to um, Santiago, from Santiago to Johannesburg, when I found 12 hour flights, direct flights, I dismissed the flat earth idea completely and said, this is, no, it's, that's how I know it's false. Well, it's more complicated than that. Uh, there are actually explanations for those flight times and I, I can't deny it. So, but let me show you another image here. This is from the movie, uh, the series Game of Thrones. Now, I haven't spent a lot of time watching it because to be perfectly honest with you, it was so filthy uh, in its sexual deviancy, we'll say, and just violence and everything about it was just awful. But what's interesting about this show is this ice wall. Now, the ice wall is very important when you start looking at flat earth theory because the north is a center uh, and there's ice treasuries in the north, but the south is an impenetrable wall of ice. And that's exactly what we're seeing in Game of Thrones. And I can't give you the number of movies. Um, you can look at Dark City. You can, uh, there's a large list and we'll see it when we get into these guys. Now, these guys who are talking about this stuff are actually breaking all at the same time, and that's very surprising. Now, the first one we have is Eric DeBay. And uh, let me give you a heads up right now. I don't think any of these guys are Christians. Mark Sargent is closest. Eric DeBay is clearly a Hindu. And uh, the Matt guy, I don't know what he is. He you know, paints girls' naked bodies. I don't know what he is. He's not a Christian. And... Um, Matt Sargent seems to claim he's a Christian, but then he talks about they, the they that are running this whole thing. Uh, and he's not talking about how God created things. So um, I'm not sure I trust any of these people, but their arguments, you have to listen to them. So let's start with Jeff Berwick and Eric DeBay. You know, over time you see the NASA images and you just go along to get along. But there's always a nagging doubt in my mind. So... Um, I brought that into my 20s when I started actually got into conspiracies with 9-11 as well. That was the first kind of breakthrough, unplugging me from the matrix kind of event that got me into the whole conspiracy scene in the first place. So uh, I definitely learned how to uh, suspend judgment while you look at evidence like you were talking about. Um, and you got to do that for this flat earth thing because you think you've got so much evidence and proof and uh, that the Earth is a spinning ball. You've seen it from NASA. You've heard some proofs that your teachers have given you. You've seen the globe on the desk for years. Um, but, um, in fact, the horizon, for instance, is always completely flat, and you don't feel any motion. So if you were just born today and looked out, you wouldn't assume that you're standing on a spinning ball. You'd assume that you are on a flat, motionless plane. So to assume that we are on a spinning ball is actually contrary to our common sense and our everyday experience. And there's also experiments that have been done uh, to test whether we're on a spinning ball or not. For instance, uh, amateur balloons have been sent up, up past 20 miles, amateur rockets as well, and the horizon rises all the way up with the camera uh, up to 20 miles up and it's flat all the way around. Now in NASA images they claim to be hundreds and hundreds of miles up and then you start to see curvature. But if you notice these images are often clearly CGI, computer graphic images, uh, sometimes not so clearly. Sometimes the earlier ones were actually done through a round window 
Um, so they've used many different tricks throughout the years, but NASA is essentially Hollywood, and all the images that you think you've seen of a spinning ball Earth uh, are faked. And uh, all the amateur uh, balloon and rocket footage that we've sent up there shows a flat horizon that rises all the way up. And that's impossible on a ball. No matter how big a ball is, as you rise up, you would have to look down to be able to see the horizon. The horizon would not rise up with you. That's a characteristic of an extended flat plane. And it's, when you're in an airplane, you can see out both windows and you can see the horizon at eye level at 35,000 feet and higher, I hope both windows. But think about it, if you're on a ball, over a ball, no matter how big that ball is, you shouldn't be able to see the horizon out your plane window. Now, pe some people think that they see the curvature of the ball out their plane window, but in fact, they're just seeing the curvature of the glass because the windows are all slightly curved to fit with the fuselage. And when you look at the horizon uh, through a window like that, it does give a slight effect. And GoPros and, and traditional cameras, wide angle fisheye lenses, they also give this kind of effect. So a lot of footage you'll see uh, of the horizon, it'll warp. And sometimes it'll be convex, sometimes it'll be concave, but as the camera stops moving and stops tilting, it will always pan out to completely flat and on level with the camera. Again, this is just impossible on a ball. It doesn't matter how big the ball is. The ball could be 10 times larger. They tell us it's 25,000 miles in circumference. Even if it was 25 million miles in circumference, if you're above it, you're above it. You would have to look down to the horizon but she just never will on, a, on the Earth, the actual Earth. So the horizon proof is one obvious one, uh, a go-to. Uh, another one is just the natural physics of water. Uh, it's the natural physics of water to find and remain at level. If uh, water is dammed up and then released, it will flow out in all directions until it becomes level again. But on a spinning ball Earth, we would have to have oceans that were hundreds of miles of curved water. And this is impossible. I mean, they, they can't show you any example of this happening, but they claim this is what's happening on the Earth. And then they claim that there's a force called gravity that holds these oceans in just, just so. You know, the, it's strong enough to hold the oceans in, but weak enough to allow, you know, bugs to take off and smoke to rise out a chimney. Um, <laughs> so the, the magical force of gravity, which was created by... Uh, uh, knighted Freemason, Sir Isaac Newton, uh, is basically their go-to answer their, that explains away anything they have a problem with. Uh, gravity is what they say caused the Big Bang somehow. Gravity is what formed the planets and the sun. Gravity is what causes the planets to orbit around the sun and moons to orbit around planets. Gravity is what causes the water to stick to the planets. Gravity is what causes the tides from the moon. Uh, you know, you name it, gravity does it, uh, as far as they're concerned. But in the flat Earth model, uh, gravity is just density or buoyancy. In other words, uh, an object in a medium, depending on their relative densities, will float or sink uh, based on the friction between the two. So whether it's a gas, liquid, or a solid, um, heavy, uh, dense, things sink and light things float. There really is an up and down in nature. They try to tell us that everything's a ball and so up and down is an illusion. People in Australia are hanging upside down and they don't know it. Um, so that's another philosophical uh, impossibility that kind of get us to believe by thinking that gravity sucks everything into the center of the ball and holds us under the ball. Um, Meanwhile, gravity causes planets to orbit around us. So like I said, when they want to, gravity causes some things to stick to the and we could become central and sometimes so it causes them to orbit. Eric DeBay and I challenge you to listen to everything he said. Uh, a very large part of it I cannot refute. Let's go to a Mark Sargent and this is even more compelling stuff. This is a series of clues that can help you get your head around both the design of the flat earth system we live in and who has been involved in the deception to hide it from you. The clue you have to look at 
is built upon another conspiracy that has been around for decades, namely the space program. Most of those watching this are aware of the varying theories revolving around NASA, the Apollo program, the space shuttle, the International Space Station, and so on. The clue itself isn't based on one of these highly debated topics, but the lack of one, more specifically, motion pictures based on actual events. This, like others in the series, is something you can check out for yourself. Everything you need to reference this is online. To begin, think of all the movies involving space travel that you've seen in your lifetime. You'll start with the obvious. Star Wars, Star Trek, Alien, just to name a few. In fact, if you go through your own personal list, you could probably come up with over 100 different off-world movies without breaking much of a sweat. That part is easy. For the second group, try to come up with space movies that aren't fantasy-based. You'll get a list that has Red Planet, Gravity, Mission to Mars, 2001, things like that. These films will usually take on a not-so-distant future theme and where we could be down the road. And it's still a pretty good-sized list. These first two groups of films are encouraged by the authority because they reinforce the globe model through assumption. The entertainment system demands that the globe view and solar system concept is a given. Therefore, the actual world view must also be true. Or to put it another way, if you're using your suspension of disbelief as you watch a movie like, say, Gravity, then subconsciously you're reinforcing the movie right on top of the real world. The more of these movies you watch and enjoy, the more the lines blur between what you want to believe and what you actually know. Watch enough movies about Mars, and you will be less astonished when NASA announces an actual mission to Mars. Same with the Moon, other solar systems, and so on. Releasing the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey in 1968, right before the actual Moon missions, was no accident. It took the greatest director of all time five years to make, and several people who saw the theater screenings claimed that many military groups were listed in the credits, only to be removed years later. But 2001 is just a side note of this clue. For those who really want to dig into Stanley Kubrick's hidden vision, I highly recommend the documentary Room 237. A link to it is below as well. Now you are aware of the first two groups of space films. There are those that contain generous amounts of fantasy, and those who try to paint our near future. These two groups are easy to find. The third group is a challenge, and again, that's where things get interesting. The moon missions concluded in 1972, and even though it's still considered the greatest achievement by mankind, no fact-based movies were made regarding it until The Right Stuff was released in 1983. Now you might say that it had only been 11 years, and maybe it was tough to get the rights, and so on, but that's not what made the film interesting. The movie ran extremely long for 1983, coming in at 3 hours and 12 minutes. It was an exhaustive look at the astronaut selection process, the competition, and the training facility itself, but when the credits rolled three hours later, chronologically, they had only gotten to the low Earth orbit missions. Just for fun, Google the Right Stuff movie and see how many spacecraft you can find. It won four Academy Awards and did a great job at the box office, but the Apollo missions were never touched. The only other major motion picture that involved the actual moon program was Apollo 13 in 1995, a full 12 years later. Apollo 13 only covered a single moon orbit and no landing or close-up reference to the previous missions below them. And after 1995, that was it. Nothing. Hollywood is known for leaving no stone unturned with reboots and sequels to nearly everything. Yet in almost 60 years, there has never been a single moon mission movie based on actual events. Hundreds of science fiction films reference in it. Everything from Superman to the Transformers. But literally nothing that covers the moon's surface. 
Six complete moon missions involving multiple vehicles, moon buggies, playing golf, and no one wants to touch it. Now to be fair, there was a TV miniseries in 1998 covering the subject. It was produced by Tom Hanks, who got involved after starring in Apollo 13. There has been no professional production of any kind since then. Again, just for fun, Google from Earth to the Moon TV series and see what you find. The why is easy, and the clue revealed. If Hollywood makes a movie about the moon landings, and it's indistinguishable from the real thing, then how do you know which is real? It raises some subtle questions involving stage technique and how long they've been in place. If Hollywood could fake it now, then when did they first have the ability? There is one other movie which stands out, and I mention it because I can't believe it ever got made, is Capricorn 1. The film's plot involved the faking of a Mars mission and how it could be accomplished. In short, it's part of the Conspiracy World Bible. I highly recommend it, and the link is below. To summarize, all space movies are encouraged by the authority, except for the ones that are based on actual accounts. Those are not allowed. The moon program has been buried in entertainment because the moon cannot be reached. It's either outside the barrier or just a highly rendered image, like any planet you see when entering a video game. The world is flat, and this is just one clue. Now, I encourage you to watch all the other clues, because that's not actually the strongest. Uh, the documentary is amazing. I cannot refute 90% of what's in this documentary. Let's go to the third guy, and this is Matt. This guy is very interesting because he was a guy that was actually hired by NASA. If you go through all his videos, you can see it's called the nasachannel.com. This is a guy in his biography where he tells you that from a very early age, very early age, his uh, dream was to be able to paint a picture that was indistinguishable from a photograph. And uh, he actually achieved it. Uh, he's an artist. Um, he draws those, you know, those things on you know, the ground where it looks like it's falling in, the concrete art. He does you know, body painting and he does all kinds of things. He's an incredible artist. But he was actually hired by NASA. And you can go back and find the interviews with him where he talks about how he was at a party one time and these guys started getting real and one guy said, yeah, you know the earth is flat. And he started explaining it. But let's watch Matt here. As much as people will say, well, I've got my own problems. It's like, no, you understand. This is bigger than your own problems. This is the, all problems flow from. Yeah. All pl problems flow, flow, uh, flow from because it's, it's the container of your problems. You know, I could basically have you worried about Ukraine and Russia because you got a picture of the globe in yeah. your head. You know, so I could basically make you react any way when at any time uh, as, a, as a government intelligence agency or, or somebody engineering scenarios or intelligence scenarios in order to have a problem reaction solution engineering to society through the globe. You know, but the minute that globe is out, you have people renouncing the globe, and it's like I'm not playing ball anymore. <laughs> yeah, like literally. And then it's like, so the whole point here is like, you want to have World War Three, and you're about to go to war, but you don't even know if this picture of the Earth is a fucking cartoon. Yeah. The people who say they run this picture, this this cartoon, are about to send you to, out to kill yourselves, kill each other, while they go underground, and then yeah. rein in a new paradigm shift, which is going to be a fusion of. Uh, of corporatism and, and communism, you know, yeah. under a one world authority, and then they're really going to clap down on anybody even questioning the globe. Then it's the big sleep. Then it's the like in the Matrix, because yeah. the other thing too that's coming too is they got a they got they got life extension technology that they want to tap into. They want to replace everybody with androids, because yeah. everybody's redundant. Google bought up all the androids, but in order to turn on the uh, artificial intelligence in these walking, moving, artificial human beings, mm -hmm. because NSA and, and Facebook has been, you'll enjoy this one as a, um, as a uh, software guy, what they've been doing is they've been like recording algorithms 
of human behavior um, vis-a-vis another human being. Like, I'm having an argument with my girlfriend on my phone over text messages because she doesn't want to talk to me. I'm having an argument with my boss because he doesn't want to talk to me. I'm having, uh, I'm negotiating a contract with somebody over Facebook or Gmail. They have the algorithms, the psychological algorithms of human uh, uh, interaction, yeah. all recorded. So, but to hand over the private communications of all these human beings around the planet to actually put these algorithms in the brains of artificial humans, they yeah. need to have a paradigm shift and they need to get rid of the American Constitution. And the uh, to hand over the, pri- them, yeah. the the privacy laws and human rights and all that stuff. So they need to have Russian Chinese. Um, they they need to basically have the the Russians and the Chinese and that model control the United States, and then go in there like the Allied forces went into the Nazi labs. Oh, look at all this information! All these yeah. experiments you've been doing. We'll take that. So then they go in the NSA, they go into Facebook, they take all the algorithms, they take go into Google, yep. they go in and they take all the androids because they, you know, they, they, it's an invasion. They've taken over. They've taken yeah. over Coca-Cola. They've taken over like, like whoever took over Volkswagen from Hitler. They take over yeah. all these companies, whatever they own, their assets, the NSA, and they go, you know what, why don't we just take all these algorithms now that we don't have the American Constitution protecting human rights and privacy, and uh, that's your uh, artificial intelligence. So let me Man, you tell you that, that this video here is a, a, a long rant, but you, you need to watch it because this guy, he's not insane. This is the guy that, that worked with NASA. He's an incredible artist, and they wanted him to start creating their fake images. So well, let's think about this the implications of this. Um, now... Uh, Eric DeBay, uh, I can't say what he believes as far as what the extent of this this scenario is. Uh, Mark Sargent believes this is the Truman Show. And I encourage you to watch that entire video and his reference to the movie, The Truman Show. It's fascinating because if you remember in that movie, uh, the character sailed to the edge of the world and that's where he found the stairs and stuff like that. Um, so... Uh, Sargent is in the school that this is actually an enclosed system, a dome system. Now, uh, uh, the math guy that we're just listening to, he actually believes, and and there's a lot of evidence uh, about the treaties, that that this entire perimeter is guarded by a multinational task force that no independent person can go and check this. Uh, you've also got to look at the stuff about Admiral Byrd because it's fascinating. Admiral Byrd flew or was the first person to fly over the North Pole, but he spent the next 28 years of his life uh, exploring the South Pole. And he also said that there's a plateau as large as the size of America with unlimited resources. You're going to have to watch the Mark Sargent video to, to get all that information. Um, and then Eric DeBay, he's a Hindu. I don't know what he believes, but uh, Matt believes that there's actually an infinite plane here, and that once you pass this ice edge, you're going to go to other systems. I don't, I don't believe that's true. In fact, I don't even know if any of this is true, but I cannot refute the arguments that these people are making. Um, there are a tremendous number of arguments that these people are making. They're all coming out at the same time, and uh, this is this is the red pill. Um, I encourage you to explore this. For me, it doesn't really change that much, believe it or not. Um, Jennifer convinced me fairly recently that uh, geocentrism is true, so I don't have very many doubts about the fact that the earth is fixed and it's at the center of everything. That's clearly what the Bible teaches. There's no question. Just basically, the earth was created before any of the stars or in the rest of the universe was created. That's that's the timeline. So if you believe the Bible, you believe that. So I don't have a problem believing that the sun and the moon and uh, the stars are actually going around the earth and that the heliocentric model is completely false. But this flat earth theory, this is extremely disturbing because this has to do with the NASA and the governments of the world who are actually patrolling a perimeter. And we're talking about 
a kind of we're talking about a Game of Thrones thing. We're talking about a ma- being in a maze. We're talking about stuff that is just incomprehensible. Like I said, this is the red pill. But I encourage you to look at this stuff yourself, investigate it for yourself, think for yourself. I I can't give you the answer. I'm still trying to figure it out. But this is definitely going down the rabbit hole. This is taking the red pill. We'll talk to you next time.